Hello and welcome everyone. Continuing with water and electrolyte balance and imbalance, we will study today part 6 that is hypokalemia and electrolyte imbalance. So what is hypokalemia? It is defined as serum potassium less than 3.5 milli equivalents per liter. It occurs in about 20% of inpatients or 20% of admitted patients. It leads to about tenfold increase in mortality. So if the potassium levels are low, the patient becomes high risk and his chances of dying increases 10 times. The cause of death is mainly due to fatal arrhythmias and this is a cause of worry and the reason why every doctor tries to keep potassium levels in check. Coming to clinical features, it mainly affects the heart, skeletal muscles, intestine and kidneys. What are the cardiac effects? Hypokalemia is a major risk factor for atrial or ventricular arrhythmias which can prove fatal. It can precipitate arrhythmia in pre-existing QT prolongation. So someone who has a pre-existing conduction abnormality like QT prolongation, hypokalemia in them can bring about fatal arrhythmias. It predisposes to digoxin toxicity. We know digoxin is an inotropic drug, brings about forceful contraction of the heart. So digoxin competes with potassium to act on sodium potassium ATPase pump. So if there is less potassium, then there will be more action of digoxin on ATPase pump and thus bringing about digoxin toxicity. ECG changes are very important in hypokalemia. And what are they? Flat T wave. ST segment depression, QT prolongation, PR interval is prolonged and prominent Q wave. So one way of remembering them is hypo means low or goes down. So the T wave, okay, so this is the normal T wave, the T wave either becomes shallow or decreases in the amplitude or it becomes flat okay the st segment this is the st segment so the st segment is depressed again it, this also goes down qt interval is prolonged okay so qt is beginning of q wave to the end of t wave so this qt interval also is prolonged okay so conduction also slows down so the ventricular depolarization and repolarization also is increased the time is increased so qt also conduction slows or the qt uh, qt uh, is also prolonged pr interval also is prolonged okay. the only thing which is increased is a u wave so this becomes a prominent u wave is seen okay so this is one way of remembering ecg changes in hypokalemia okay everything goes down except u wave which becomes prominent Now coming to skeletal effects, muscle weakness. Hypokalemia leads to hyperpolarization of skeletal muscles. That means it becomes more negative. This impairs the capacity to depolarize and contract, okay. thus causing muscle weakness. This weakness may progress to paralysis. It may undergo rhabdomyolysis or breakdown of muscle. If that happens, the muscle can release myoglobin which stores oxygen in muscle and the loss of myoglobin through kidneys can cause obstruction and acute renal failure okay, which can be an emergency. Coming to the intestinal effects, paralytic ileus is seen. This again is due to impaired muscle contraction which is seen because of hypokalemia. Decreased gastric secretion. Potassium is required to pump hydrogen ions out of gastric parietal cells via the hydrogen potassium exchange pump. Hence, in hypokalemia, less gastric acid secretion is there. Coming to the renal effects, now these are very important. First is salt retention. 
there is hyper absorption of sodium in proximal tubule which occurs through various mechanisms next is bicarbonate retention which leads to metabolic alkalosis bicarbonate reabsorption takes place in proximal tubule through two different sodium channel co-transporters and this leads to metabolic alkalosis phosphate urea which is loss of phosphorus this is due to decreased absorption of phosphorus at the proximal tubule as the sodium phosphorus co-transporter is reduced hence the absorption is decreased and the loss of phosphorus takes place there is increased ammonia production now hypokalemia it stimulates two biochemical pathways one is glutamine transaminase and the other is pepsic or phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase now these two pathways when they are stimulated the end result is increased formation of ammonia next renal effect is polyuria that occurs due to adh resistance at the level of kidneys the anti diuretic hormone is not able to act under renal effects hypokalemia can also cause acute kidney injury and it can cause end stage renal disease if hypokalemia is long standing so the renal effects of hypokalemic hypokalemia is very very or very very important so what are the causes of hypokalemia hypokalemia can occur because of either an intracellular shift okay the potassium which is present the few potassium which is present extracellularly extracellularly that also moves intracellular so that can cause hypokalemia or there can be a loss of potassium which is true loss of potassium okay so the loss of potassium can occur via kidneys the kidneys are losing excess of uh, potassium in the urine or it is lost somewhere else that is non renal loss coming to the diagnostic evaluation of hypokalemia let us first look into redistribution of potassium okay so redistribution of potassium the first is redistribution that means movement of potassium from extracellular to intracellular cells the first is insulin response insulin response after injecting insulin potassium moves intracellularly and this and there occurs hypokalemia this occurs because of increased activity of sodium potassium atpase okay we know the activity of sodium potassium atpase okay which takes in potassium inside and sodium outside so there is increased activity of sodium potassium atpase after injecting insulin which causes hypokalemia next is alkalosis alkalosis again there is hypokalemia due to intracellular movement of potassium again this occurs due to increased activity of sodium potassium atpase catecholamine or beta adrenergic access catecholamines they stimulate beta receptors which cause movement of potassium intracellularly this also occurs due to increased activity of sodium potassium atpase now pseudo hypokalemia due to increase in wbc now increase in wbc in sample causes uptake of potassium and results in hypokalemia so the potassium is taken up by the wbcs this occurs specially when the serum is not separated soon after taking the sample so a patient who has high wbc count you take the sample and you do not centrifuge and separate serum early then the potassium is taken up by wbcs and which results in hypokalemia which is a false hypokalemia or pseudo hypokalemia hypothermia hypothermia causes again increased sodium potassium atpase activity and beta receptor stimulation which results in hypokalemia now let us look into two deficit of potassium or true loss of potassium 
Now first we have to determine whether the loss of potassium is renal or non-renal. The potassium loss is through the kidneys or through some other organs. So what do we do? We do this by measuring potassium in the urine. It can be a 24 hour urine sample or a spot urine sample. Okay, first we measure potassium in the urine. If 24 hour sample which is more accurate has potassium more than 25 milli equivalents per liter then the kidneys are responsible for loss of potassium and hypokalemia. Okay, if the loss of potassium is more than 25 then the kidneys are responsible. If it is less than 25 then it is non-renal cause of hypokalemia. Okay, so loss is non-renal or there is decreased intake. So non-renal loss can be from GI like diarrhea or skin or it can be because of decreased intake of potassium. Now renal loss once it is established then next we localize on the cause. First we check the acid base status. Okay. We do ABG analysis of the patient. If the patient is having metabolic acidosis then most likely the cause is renal tubular acidosis type 1 or type 2. If metabolic alkalosis is present, then next we do is 24 hours urinary chloride. If it is more than 10, then it is either hyperaldosteronism or excess of uh, aldosterone or Cushing's or excess of glucocorticoids. If it is less than 10, then the cause suggested are vomiting diuretics which cause hypokalemia because of renal loss of potassium. If the acid base status happens to be variable then it's most likely either acute tubular necrosis or hypomagnesemia. Now how hypomagnesemia causes hypokalemia? Magnesium deficiency causes loss of potassium from renal outer medullary potassium channels in the kidneys. Hypomagnesemia also inhibits sodium potassium ATPase so there is more of potassium extracellularly which is ultimately taken to the kidneys and lost through the urine. So this was briefly about what is hypokalemia and its biochemical basis and cause biochemical basis of cause and diagnostic workup. So thank you. Next we'll be talking on part 7 which is hyperkalemia. So thank you very much. If you have understood, so please like, share or comment. Thank you once again.